There is a clear, nearly moonless night tonight. Only 24% full moon and it's not going to rise till 0330. It seems like a great night to get back to shooting a couple of projects I've had on the go. So I'll get on to night two of the Flame Nebula. I only have a few hours before it sets, but perhaps I can get another three to four hours of integration. And I'll spend the rest of the night on the Cigar Nebula, which is now coming into its sixth night of imaging. Now, some persons have asked me in the past, how do I reposition the telescope to get it exactly where it was when continuing one of these ongoing projects? And most of the images that I shoot are in fact ongoing projects. Unless a target is very bright, it is rare that I'll spend less than two nights on it. And sometimes, especially for targets of limited opportunity where they're only up high enough for just a few hours, I might spend weeks or months on a single target. And to shoot such targets, it's imperative to be able to center the telescope on the object exactly as it was through every previous night of the project. Well, if you're a Nini user, fortunately this is very easy to do. Remarkably easy. So easy, in fact, this is going to be one of the shortest videos I have ever made. We'll focus our attention on the Flame Nebula to be found in Orion's Belt. Here it is, as portrayed in Stellarium. On the first night, when I begin a new DSO project, I open Nina and go to the Sky Atlas where I enter the catalog name of that project. We'll use Nina Sky Atlas to get the targeting information on NGC 2024, the Flame Nebula. All I have to do is go up here and enter the catalog number. And then hit search or just press return. In a moment, Nina will pull up the information on the Flame Nebula. Then I'll pop over to the right and click Set for Framing Assistant. And Nina will pull the information on this DSO from its online catalog and open that in the Framing Assistant. Now I've already entered the information on my telescope's focal length and my sensor size in Nina. So Nina knows what my camera sensor will see of the image. That square in the center portrays that. In other words, the square in the center portrays how the camera sensor will perceive the composition of the DSO. I can click and grab that square and move it around, but I like where it's positioned now. So what I'm going to do is go right here and click Add Target to Sequence. Submenus will pop up asking me if I want to pick one of Nina's default sequences or one of the more advanced custom sequences that I've pre-programmed into Nina. I'll select the Advanced LRGB Sequence 3, a highly versatile sequence for LRGB filming that I created about a year ago. Nina will automatically switch over to the Sequencer tab where it will also automatically open this new sequence. Along with all the imaging settings that I have put in the sequence, the sequence contains the coordinates for composing on the target, right up here. I can then save the sequence as a new JSON file by going down here on the lower left, clicking this icon, and giving the sequence a useful name, such as Flame Nebula or NGC2024 sequence. Whatever you want really is fine. As you can see, I already have two previously saved sequences for the Flame Nebula that I'm using, so I'm not going to save this one. Now, let's say I got to shoot this target all night. The next few nights were cloudy, but then I get another good night and I want to continue shooting this target. And I want to be able to stack the new information on top of the old information. To do the best job, making the maximum use of the information that I already have, I need to compose the image exactly the way it was composed before. And here it gets really easy. To resume shooting this target, all I have to do is go into the Sequencer tab here, click the folder icon down here on the lower left, and select the Flame Nebula sequence. I've been shooting the Flame 2 sequence, so I'll just select that one again. When the sequence is reopened, I'll go to the top of the sequence at the Target section and click this icon right beside the name box. If you hover over it, a pop-up will appear that says, Send Coordinates to the Framing Wizard. A moment later, you'll see the framing window opened with the composing square shown here exactly positioned where we left off last time. Now, to get the telescope back into that position, one just needs to go right here and click slew and center. And Nina will feed the target coordinates to the mount. And in moments, the telescope and camera will be lined up once again, composed exactly as it was during the previous night's shooting. And you can rinse and repeat this for as many nights as you choose to continue shooting your DSO. And that's all there is to it. As you can see, getting the telescope composed exactly as it was on previous nights is remarkably simple in Nina. It's one of the many reasons that I choose Nina over any other software. Thank you for watching, and if you have any questions, observations, or thoughts, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. And as always, I hope this video helps you to improve your abilities and have even more fun when you get out there and shoot that incredible sky.